Hopefully everyone's enjoying the enjoying the sunshine of the day as much as as I have been. I'm one of those people who tends to uh, be ready for spring about the end of November, so it's been been good to see those signs of spring coming. Well, the focus of today's message is a technology practice that some of you may have heard of or use, and a lesson that we can draw from it in our lives apart from technology. In a world that's constantly filled with media consumption, there are thousands of life hacks on offer in various blogs and podcasts and videos, some of them useful, some of them not quite so much, a lot of half-baked stuff out there, but some genuinely useful things that you find from time to time. One such suggestion for bettering your life is to take advantage of audio and video playback controllers to increase the speed of the things that you listen to or watch and consume them at a faster rate than normal. Now there are a lot of proponents for this practice who say that it has a lot of benefits, primarily the ability to consume more information than you otherwise could. And many resourceful folks see this as a method to survive some of the sleep-inducing recorded trainings that have become commonplace uh, in workplaces for remote and hybrid workers, especially, and recorded meetings and things of that nature, and it's kind of hard to blame folks for that. It would be nice to get to the end of those a little bit faster. Now, on the other side, of course, are folks who either don't enjoy consuming media at increased speeds or have reservations of one type or another about whether it's really good for you. It's not really my purpose in the message to argue for either side. Instead, let's focus on an area of our lives where both the concept and the mindset have some application. The 2006 movie Click features Adam Sandler, whose character Michael Newman is given a special remote that gives him the ability to skip out on the difficult parts of life by either turning down the volume or fast forwarding through them. Now to clarify, I'm not endorsing or recommending the movie, just using the plot line to connect what we sometimes wish we had the ability to do with these technology capabilities that folks are using in real life. We can all relate to the desire to skip past the mundane and downright difficult times in life, the experiences that you would love to just not have to have. Well, Israel collectively faced one of those times that anyone would understandably rather not live through. Their predicament is immortalized in the Exodus story. Soon after leaving Egypt, they found themselves trapped between the sea and the pursuing Egyptian army, seemingly with no conceivable way of escape. And that all begins to change when Moses receives a command from God that will provide a way out. In Exodus 14, 16, God said, lift up your rod, the sea will divide, and you will go through on dry ground. That's great, everybody says. Truly incredible. It was and it is. Wouldn't this be a great time to speed this process up just a bit? Maybe just a 1.5x, one and a half times normal speed. Get us across just a little bit quicker. Well, God proceeded, as he always does, to follow through on what he said he would provide. And when this incredible miracle had taken shape, the sea was no longer an insurmountable obstacle. But from Israel's vantage point, they were probably thinking something along the lines of, we're still on this side, <laughs> and we need to be on that side. Our wives, our children, our animals, all this stuff that we brought with us needs to get from here, where we are, to over there as soon as possible. 
So how did God let the meeting of that need play out? Well, as Exodus 14.21 points out, this event played out at normal speed. Seconds, minutes, and hours passed in real time, the same way they had since the beginning of time. I have to give credit where it's due. Mandy and the kids had read this verse that's on the screen, Exodus 14.21, one morning, and our son Joshua pointed out the phrase, all that night, and the realization that although the crossing was an awesome miracle, it didn't just happen instantaneously. The wind blew all night, the waters were divided all night, and Israel plodded wearily from one side to the other, you guessed it, all night. From our human point of view, wouldn't this have been a great time to have a life playback controller? One of those reality-altering remote controls, like in the movie Click, where the whole ordeal could have been over in just a fraction of the time. Why doesn't God give us the capability to speed up our experience of time? Why was life designed in such a way that causes us to experience disinterest, disappointment, and difficulty in the same cadence and flow of time as the parts of life that we enjoy? What benefit could we possibly gain from not being able to minimize the elements of life that we must endure and would not if we could choose not to? Well, the answer is fairly simple, and it's found in the instruction that Moses gave to the Israelites as they left Egypt and embarked on the journey toward the promised land. Remember, Remember this day when she went up from Egypt. Why? Because I brought you out, God says, because it was my strength. It was my ability. I am the one who brought you out, and I want you to remember how you came out and why you came out. All of the elements of life that we would rather avoid have lessons to teach us, and because they love us, God the Father and Jesus Christ, want us to remember what we learn as we live through them. And whether or not we can take in and process audio and video at an increased rate without losing anything of value, we were designed to take in and process the experiences of life at the same speed that they happen in. As the quote on the screen from Professor Paul King states, retaining something of value from what we experience depends on deeply processing the experiences to connect them with the things that we already know or don't know or think that we know. Ultimately, the goal is to internalize what we learn from what we experience so that we will have the benefit of that learning to help us in making life's many choices. The well-known passage contained in Deuteronomy 30, where Moses implores and exhorts and encourages the Israelites to choose life, echoes this need to both gain and retain the lessons that life brings to us through our experiences. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 11, it says, For this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you. That phrase, too mysterious, just means hidden. It's not hidden. It's not undiscoverable. It's not beyond your grasp and beyond your realm. In verse 14, it says, the word is actually very near you. It's in your mind and in your mouth and in your heart. And that in your heart means in your inner parts. It's talking about what's inside of you, how you internalize things. When God reveals the truth of his way to us, how does that truth come to be plainly visible, accessible, and understandable to our innermost parts? Well, we know that it requires God opening our minds through the Holy Spirit, but also it's by what we learn through 
what we live, by what we learn through what we live. That learning comes in real time as we encounter life's many experiences. Even though it may not feel like it during those experiences, that's for the better and not for the worse. So as a final takeaway that we all struggle to accept but benefit from when we do, we don't really have the options in day-to-day -day life that we do with technology productions about life. The elements of life that we experience are consumed in real time, no faster and no slower. God designed it that way and for a very good purpose. So let's accept that reality and engage in the processing necessary to internalize the lessons that life brings so that we can remember them and apply them.